ARCA race, these guys are going to be running probably in the 150, 160 mile per hour range, sometimes maybe faster, and anything can happen, and it can happen quickly. In auto racing, it's not only the drivers who face danger, of course. Everybody near the track is at risk, the pit crews and the paramedics. February 11th, 1990, Daytona International Speedway. Paramedic Mike Staley is tending to an injured driver. Mike seems to be in a safe area of the infield, but cameras focused on the race reveal that he is not. Usually in a race like the ARCA 200, you can expect accidents just because of the inexperience that some of the drivers have in dealing with some of the situations that they're going to find themselves in. And that is part of the reason why we have six or seven cameras there. My job during the race is to cover turns three and four and to specifically just watch for key passes during the race and also for any wrecks. And it was pretty busy that day. There was an accident on the back sheet when Raymond Scott flipped upside down and that we barely got through. There was a lot of cars spinning trying to avoid the accident and then thinking after we got through all the mess that We'll really be glad to get that one behind us. After five or six wrecks already in that race, you're kind of thinking, okay, we're home free now, and uh, we're going to get the, the race finished, and everybody's going to be okay. It was like lap 75, 76, and I was following the lead pack as they were going through, and back behind them is when things start breaking loose. I came down the back chute, and immediately I saw smoke going into turn three. Didn't realize what the problem was until I saw Slick Johnson sliding up the racetrack. I dove to the bottom of the racetrack to go by. Slick Johnson came back off of the wall, back down the racetrack, and caught me in the right rear. He spun me around, I slid across the racetrack, and I backed into Billy Thomas, coming to a rest on the infield, coming off turn four. The dispatcher in the tower gave us clearance to go down to the accident scene and start uh, checking out the drivers as we came to them. And Mike got out of the ambulance to go check the driver of the car, and I kept in eye contact with Mike in case Mike needed something. And then I looked back onto the back stretch, and we're just following the cars that had made it through the wreck, and realizing it was under caution, I figured they're racing pretty tightly for being under the caution. And as it came into turn three, I saw a couple cars go three wide, which I thought was, was pretty nuts considering it was a, a caution. And somebody got tapped from behind and came sliding right off the track. Look out, look out. Yeah. I got out of the race car and I looked over, saw the paramedic underneath the other race car that was involved in the accident. As I was going up to Mike, I truly thought that when I got him untangled and we rolled him over, that I was going to find him dead. I was real surprised to see that he was breathing and that I had, that I had a pulse. When I was able to open up my eyes, I was able to see my friends around me uh, screaming orders to each other, uh, some of them openly weeping and crying. I saw that love of man opening itself up to me, uh, as well as being able to see the sky that there uh, was light at the end of the tunnel. Once we had Mike stabilized on the long backboard, we picked Mike up and uh, carried him toward the helicopter. And it was just about the time that we were loading Mike into the helicopter that our eyes met. And he reached up and, and took my hand and kind of nodded and I put out my hand to Ken to let him know that I knew what was going on and I was maybe searching for a little bit of strength at that time not knowing if I was going to live uh, not being afraid of death but being afraid of not living when the car 
car struck the car that Mike was standing by, it projected him. When he went up in the air, he did a, about two flips in the air. You can see his boot being knocked off and Mike hitting the ground and then the car sliding towards him. Knowing Mike for the length of time that I've known him, it makes it really a difficult situation. We had called the hospital to check on his condition, to see how he was doing, and they had told us at that point he had broken legs, broken arms, two broken knees, he had a, a shattered forearm. A critical point in time came when a surgeon appeared over me and blurted out that, Mike, I have to tell you, it looks like we might amputate your left arm. And I said, I'm left-handed. Please don't cut off my arm. When Mike first came to the clinic, every extremity was in a cast. It was pretty amusing. His first statement to me was, I'm going to give you 110%, and I expect the same out of you. He said, I'm not an unreasonable man. If you're having a bad day, I can accept 103%. About two and a half months after the wreck, we thought, well, we should check on this guy again and see how he's doing and just see the progress. I was expecting someone to come driving up and help him out of the car and help him into the physical therapy, and all of a sudden, here comes the truck pulling up, and Mike Staley's driving, and it was just a, a shock to me to see someone who you had seen flung through the air just a couple of months before, and here he is back up walking and well on the road to recovery. Not only has Mike been extremely inspired and motivated to recover from this injury, he's also been very inspirational to many of the other patients in the clinic. I truly believe that this accident did happen for a reason, and that reason was to show others that there is hope after a problem in their life. And I've considered this accident to be no different than the worst that's ever happened to any individual. I came to see the video six weeks after the accident. I had known that I had flown through the air because one of my acquaintances made a medal for me that said, best flip, worst landing. I knew I was blessed and I proudly thanked my friends who saved my life. Today, Mike travels the country giving motivational talks to different groups. He shows them the tape of the crash and tells them how he beat the odds and survived. We'll return after this.